Okay, welcome to Stampscaping 101. Um, this is a little bit of a different video here. I've done one of these in the past, but not for a while. But um, I was looking at some cards that I've done over the past, oh, I don't know, year probably. And I was thinking that this recent lesson that I did, um, after I matted it up and put it into a card format, I thought, you know, I really should do this with more of my scenes that are already complete. This mat, uh, the matting and card formatting really <laughs> makes these scenes look a lot better. I mean, I'm kind of a scene stamper more than a card maker, but I do format my scenes into cards uh, at times and uh, I don't know, I should do it more often, but I thought I would show you what I'm doing here. And like I said, I've done this in the past, but um, uh, I'll show you what I do. And uh, it's just a very simple um, format here, or as far as thinking process goes. But um, on a lot of my scenes, I have these little dot flourishes, okay? Be it with the gel pen, This, in this case it's the... Uh, Dr. Martin's opaque white and those little dots like that. I mean, you know, when you're matting things, it's about kind of bringing out certain colors within the uh, the compositions or whatnot. Um, but you can also bring out textures and details and whatnot. So, um, oftentimes, the final touches to these types of scenes, or one of the final touches, often it's um, pigment ink or something like that, but um, it's the white gel pen and just laying down these little tiny white dots, okay? And those are things that I kind of like to bring out in my scenes. Um, I don't know. I've, it seems like I do it on 95% of my uh, mats that I make, but this little white line around here, I think, I feel it really brings out the that little shimmering uh, touch in the scene, you know, it's down here in the uh, um, shore and uh, out here in the water in this scene. Eh, I didn't put any on these uh, reeds here in the foreground, but I do at times. But you'll see that same kind of uh, vehicle, you know, of a tiny little line around there um, in most of these mats. Without that line, I don't know. I I feel it looks okay, and, and certainly better than having no mat at all. Now this one happens to be silver. I don't have a lot of paper, but uh, you know, I have a decent selection. I'm kind of running low, but um, anyways, I just put this one on silver. I mean, uh, yeah, silver, kind of a shimmering paper. No, actually, this one was just straight silver. A lot of the, the ones that I have are more of the... Um, uh, Star Dream style of paper. I don't know, what is it? Kind of iridescent? Is that the word I'm looking for? I don't know. But, anyways, I mean, you can pull out anything that you don't have to. The matting does not have to be a mystery if you don't do that, or, you know, a lot of people are have a much better eye for doing this than I do, for, for sure. But, um, I don't know, I always just kind of hold it up to my, you know, paper, and it doesn't have to be anything uh, logical, you know, just make it visual. If I did something like this, it would probably bring out this uh, kind of this warmer sand in here. Sometimes you do the double mat to bring out different things. And again, here's that little white line in there. It's really thin. It's probably like a sixteenth of an inch, maybe. And I, I make it kind of uh, the same or similar to the, uh, the width of a dot. I don't know, maybe it's double that. Maybe that would be like way too thin out here, but uh, it's probably about a sixteenth of an inch, and I don't do any measuring. I just, you know, what I do is I put the photo stickers on the back here, and I'll just, you know, lay this down on my card and just eyeball it, get it all stuck down, and then I just take a ruler, and with that X-Acto blade, I just kind of lay that down where I think it should go, and I make my cut, okay? So I don't do any measuring um, at all. 
because that would just take too much time. But anyways, I'll show you what I've uh, kind of come up with for some of these so far. Um, I've just started with this one. I, I'm starting to run out of some matting paper, but uh, that little white line could be just copy paper if you want, because it is so thin, you know. Um, it could really be anything, throwaway paper. But, you know, I'll do something like this, and then the next kind of paper from that, you know, I usually like to go, I don't know, about three times as large, especially if it's like some kind of colored paper. I don't want it too thin, you know. I don't think it would be a waste, but uh, I don't know, the paper that I'm using is it's like Star Dream a lot of times, or it's just thicker, you know, so I usually give it a little bit more of a border like that. I don't really like this color for this scene, but um, I don't know, I was trying to figure it out. This is a copper, I don't know, I'm kind of a sucker for these metallic styles of paper, but, you know, I mean, something like that would even look nice. It has the kind of the same hue and characteristic of some of these uh, uh, little uh, hills, I guess, or whatnot. Not really hills, but uh, little, I don't know, whatever areas in the, within the grass, shadows and whatnot. But I don't know, that wouldn't really be a good thing to really pull out, though, you know putting this on. I don't want to enhance my kind of areas that aren't really very interesting, so I need to figure this one out. I mean, you could go complementary to it. It doesn't have to go with something within the scene, or you could just make it, you know, kind of more dramatic, like this. Okay, these are just the mats, too. I mean, that looks pretty good, right? But I think it would benefit from, I don't know, like something like Let's, let's say I, I put it on a card, when I make the card, maybe it's black card or something like that. I mean, something like that would look really nice, wouldn't it? Yeah. But, again, if you're doing that, uh, I would say just about anything looks better than, than nothing. But I'll show you some other things that I went through. Um, this one is one of the, another lesson... And like I said, I'm going to put this on something. I have a lot of black paper, so it might go on something like this. Maybe that's too dark. Yeah, as far as, you know, what will eventually be my card, the folding part of it. Maybe it'll be more of that top flap side, but um, know, maybe something like this. Yeah, I like that better as far as a card. So I would just take a 8.5 by 11, crease it, you know, like that, and make it like a half page. Uh, card format, but anyways, this one right here has this gold, you know, uh, matting on it, just to kind of bring out some of the uh, the golden hue in here, and then I have this little purple right here, because kind of purple and gold, gold go really well together, and I mean, there is a slight kind of plum hue in here, so uh, not that I want to bring out the stocks or anything like that, but I don't know. It's just kind of, a lot of these uh, mats are just happen, you know, to be that, oh, I saw that purple paper and I just kind of pulled it out. I wouldn't put it on, you know, in here if it was like some other color that just didn't go along with this at all, but it went close enough, so I used it. So and that's the case with all these things. Here's that um, kind of coppery paper right here on the mat. You see that kind of little white matting around that to bring out those little um, dots in here, you know, this little line right here. But I felt that this mat kind of brought out uh, these in here, and in this scene right in here I put all, all these little butterflies in the background, or they're supposed to represent little monarchs, and that color went well with all these little dots, I thought. Okay. Um, Let's see, here's that uh, real recent scene that I did, I don't know, when was that, a couple days ago or something like that, but that purple one, I thought that went really well with this very pale white right here, and then I did that little pale violet like that, and then there's not very much contrast between these two, which I often do, you know, I mean there's not very much contrast between all three of these, but in this case, I thought it would be okay just to do it a little bit more subtle, and then eventually maybe I'll put it on like a, you know, a black cardstock or something like that, but I thought that looked really dramatic like that. Uh, I don't know, I'll figure out what the card I'll do, but 
Oh, the space around it will probably go something like that, maybe. You know, it'll be a folded card. Yeah, again, I, I think top flat would work best with this one. I don't know, all these little things like that, too, when you put them in a card format, it really gives you the opportunity to put something on the inside for sequential aesthetics, you know. Having something to do with this um, cover, and I have a lot of quote stamps or th something like that, or I can just, you know, you can use one of these elements from what you stamped, and if it's in black paper, I mean, I could do another thing in here, you know, little, simple little... Um, element or you know it can fold up and I can have a piece of white paper in there and paste it in there again or something of that sort but something to do with flowers would be good as far as the quote goes and if you put this into an envelope it's kind of fun to do something you know another flower on the envelope so they open it up and you get something like this then you pop up the card and you have that uh, element reiterated in the strong visual and this one of course is the uh, flowers so um i don't know we'll figure it out okay this one right here uh triple matting okay i used a bit of this here it is i mean this is kind of a waste of this paper in a way just to have it a thin little line around it but look how that looks on there see that green is just it doesn't have enough contrast against black, unless I do mat this on, you know, a lighter color. But if I am going to mat it on something dark, that little line around there is nice. And then, I don't know if you can see it, it's kind of, see it has that iridescence to it. So it's that little extra touch in there. And I thought that green looked pretty well. I didn't, I think that was the only green that I had. I, I would have preferred a different green, something more along the lines of this mossy looking color, but when that's all you have, you know, um, and it can't wait, and we're not going to hold that forever. I'm just going to mat it up with whatever I had. Here's another scene. You might recognize this if you watch these videos or a lot of them, but it'll look something like that, I guess. Um, yeah. Thin line. This color in here, it's really subtle, but See this color right back here? That warm tone? I thought that brought it out a little bit. That kind of matches with that. And uh, by putting that matting on there, I thought that within this cool composition, in terms of temperature, uh, color temperature, I thought it's nice to bring that out a little bit. Okay? But, I don't know. When I'm looking at this scene, I'm not saying, okay, I want that color. Okay, I just happened to have this and it worked out just fine so uh you know that's the way it goes when you don't have a ton of paper to go with all right uh the aspens right here um oh also what i did with these i sprayed them with a kind of a spray fixative uh krylon uv but look how shiny it is too but when I sprayed them over, and I really um, gave it that glossy, deep look, you know, um, to all these. Now, these are on glossy paper, but the saturations are really deep, because I have sprayed it now with a clear spray, and that brings out the vibrant colors and whatnot, but my um, beams of light can disappear, like if you've ever sprayed... Um, a chalk drawing or a pastel or something like that, you know that if you spray it, it kind of darkens and you lose some of the subtleties of the uh, the highlighted or lighter areas. If you put like white chalk on top of a darker one, then you have a little bit of a, you know, a value difference because you have those lighter colors on the top. But if you know, if you spray them, it can, you can lose all of those um, lighter tones, lighter shades oftentimes. And that's what happens sometimes with things like pigment ink, which is what these beams are made out of. Um, so what you do is you spray it, and then you just go back in, and I just mask those over, and I reiterated what had faded out a little bit with the spraying. So you just could put it right over the top of your spray fixative or clear coating, and it works just fine, you know. It, it's not sealed in 
um, but it's on the surface, but it's on there just fine unless someone just wipes their hand across it, you know. It'll be intact enough. All right, but here's that matting on there again, and I don't know, like I had an 8.5 by 11 of that gold paper there, and I thought that looked really nice, and I here's this kind of plum... Yeah, it's more plum than violet, I would say, but, you know, that kind of relates to some of these colors down here and some of the colors without, you know, throughout the tree, and it's kind of a complement of gold, you know. So, it's subtle, and uh, I don't know, I'll figure out what kind of paper to put it on. Uh, here's that other recent scene that I've done, and this is just a... It's kind of a blue, really pale blue... Um, I think it's the last star dream that I had. I don't know what color it was, but it was a real pale blue. But I thought it brought out the uh, the moon a little bit, you know, in terms of the cool light. And then I matted it again on black, and I, I'm not sure what kind of card I'll put it on, but you can almost really put it on anything, you know, if I have an 8.5 by 11. I mean, look at this. This is copper, and, I mean, it looks okay, you know? It's not bad. This is some kind of textured... Oh, I don't know what color that is. But, see? I mean, that looks, you know... If I folded this over, that would be, you know, a pretty nice uh, color as well. And it kind of brings out that black mat around there just fine. Um... I'm not going to put it on here, but look at this. Isn't that, that crazy style of paper right there? I mean, you could, if I had something... I was going to do something here. I mean, you can go crazy at times. I mean, uh, maybe not, but... I mean, it doesn't look... I mean, I would probably throw in some of their mat around it, but... I mean, if you went crazy, like something like that, I mean, wouldn't this be cool to put like a... Uh, crystal or something like that and actually put it in here or you can do some kind of like glittery type of touch but I mean the texturing I don't know it's it's a little bit nuts and you would need to bring something into it that would kind of match that shimmery look but I mean the colors that this paper is really putting out do match what's going on in here and one of the things that's nice about something like that is you ch you know you change this around and it you know, the colors kind of change, and they're all kind of related to the colors within this. You you would just need to match it, I think, a little bit, you know, with, uh, like I said, one of the, you know, pop a couple crystals in here or something like that. One time I said rhinestones, someone said, oh, no, Kevin, you got to do crystals. So little dots, you know, little sticker things or glue it on there or something like that. And, I mean, that would be a pretty dramatic look, I think. It'd be kind of crazy, and uh, I don't know, maybe a little bit over the top, but so you can see what that might look like. Here's black, but um, let's say I put a tiny, well, maybe this. Put a tiny bit of that white, and you go with black, maybe like that. I think, yeah, the black would kind of match the trees, and then. Then if you had something like this, you know, I don't know, it's, it's nuts, but I'm just saying that's, this is like an extreme thing, but I mean, this right here, you know, with something like that, that looks better than the, just this, you know, as far as a finished, you know, end, end, uh, product, you might say. So anyways, I have this one to go, and i got to figure out something with this. There's a lot of opportunities in here. I mean, I could go with blue, even, um, for that little thin line, because there's little blue dots in here, but there's all that little type of, you know, detail in there, and that would be perfect for that really thin um, border mat like that. Okay, see that right there? But that little thin thing in there, and that really brings out kind of the objects that are of the same value and of the same, you know, or, or of a, a similar width, okay? 
So anyways, something like this will be really fun. Maybe I'll do this in black, and then I'll figure out some other um, color for the card. A lot of them will be dark, um, because I just don't have a ton more paper, but here's this one right here, but see all that little tex uh, texturing down here? That's supposed to represent kind of lichen. You know, I can do something of that sort. You know, in here... I don't know. Uh, it actually doesn't match. This one's going to be probably a little bit more tough. I need to find some some color like that. I used to have it, but I, I think I'm now out of it. But that really super pale blue would be a really good one as far as a, a color around it, you know. But I don't know. So more to do, and then I'm going to format these into cards and see what I can do on the inside of the cards and... Uh, I don't know. I'll figure it out. I just use these little adhesive squares. Photo stickers, I thought they called them. Maybe this is a different brand, but... Um, I don't know. Probably easier with a little tape gun, but I have a lot of control over that. So when I go with uh, three mats, that's that's a lot of stickers because I put them... I put like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine on each one, you know? Just so that, you know, there isn't like something like a, a flap sticking up. I hate that when I, you know, that happens when all it would have taken was one more sticker to put on there, but so right now we're probably talking about oh god, 9, 18, 25 then I'll put some more on the back of that one when I do it, so eh, there's quite a few stickers, but you know, one of these boxes holds a thousand stickers, so and they're, you know, they're not that expensive, so Anyway, but when I do that, I can kind of reposition a little bit. I guess you can with a tape gun, too, or a glue gun or whatnot, but um, I don't know. That's what I've just uh, come to use, so. Anyway, some mats right here. And I figured I would do it that way before I started uh, carding them up, because this is kind of like a, I don't know, it's like a assembly line, you know, of... Uh, I don't know, it's a little bit slow going, so... Anyway, uh, some fun carding up uh, results. I don't know if I call the process of doing this fun, but... Uh, I don't know, every time I do it, I think, that really made the card... Uh, you know, it just makes them look a lot better. And I should do it more often. I don't know. Uh, maybe not. I'll do them once in a while, but just do them a lot at one time, I think. Maybe that's best. Anyways, uh, if you have any comments or things that I should do, let me know. Oh, I should do some cards. I should do some things like where you have to flap the card over, you know, where this is on the inside of the card, and then you flap it over, and there's some kind of, like, cutout on the front of it or something like that. Wouldn't that be cool? And, like, block letters where, you know, the scene shows through, and then you know, it flips up, so, I don't know, uh, we'll figure some things out here. All right, anyways, thanks for watching.